สวัสดีครับ and welcome back I hope you have enjoyed your lunch break I mean if you share the same time zone as Bangkok Thailand and once again welcome all of you from all around the world back to our fourth international annual conference on food innovation Food Innopolis International Symposium 2021 and we are here under the theme of driving a sustainable future through biocircular green economy This morning, we were learning a little bit more about the BCG economy model. Now we are diving deep into to our two very interesting um, discussion happening right now. So the first topic of our afternoon session would be the beginning of the value chain and how we can transform the face of agriculture by instilling the new technology and innovation into the traditional process to renew and to reinvent the agriculture world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so very honored to have our executive both from Thailand and Israel as our speakers for the topic of smart farming, producing more from less. What a smart topic, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first speaker, Chief Operating Officer from Aquitas Israel, Amit Noam. And also please welcome Senior Executive Vice President from Siam Kuboda Corporation Company Limited, Gunwara Pon Osatapan. Last but not least, our moderator for this session, CEO and co-founder of Acumate Company Limited, Zitras. Please welcome Dr. Panachit Kitti Panyangam. All right, now stage is yours. Hi, hi, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome to, to the, the talk and panel discussion here. Okay, today we will be talking about uh, smart farming and the future of the agricultures that we are uh, con concerning. Yeah. Uh, today we, we are with uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Noms, CEO of uh, Agritas, and Ms. Varapon Osanhan, uh, Senior Executive Vice President Siam Kubota Corporation. Welcome both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, first of all, uh, can I ask uh, Ms. Mr. Ahmed, could you introduce shortly about uh, Agritas? Yeah. Sure. So uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, I'm really happy to, to, to be here and share about Agritas. So my name is Amit Noam. I'm the CEO of Agritas. Agritas is an Israeli company in the field of uh, agriculture technology. Uh, based in Israel, but working today internationally in uh, over 35 countries, uh, serving mainly the food and beverage uh, ecosystem companies like Starbucks, Nestle, Heineken, General Mills. In, uh, in uh, Thailand, we work with the CP Group. And what we aim to help them is to provide predictable and sustainable uh, supply chain with using technology that enables visibility into the entire operations and the abilities to support all the growers with technology and also give them full visibility into what's going on in their in their supply chain. Uh, maybe we'll start by seeing a short video uh, about Agritask and then we'll continue from there. Global food systems are facing a crisis. Food demand is projected to almost double by 2050 and the gaps we're seeing in the agriculture sector are growing with billions being spent in annual yield losses in crops, near farm waste, and billions of farmers lacking insurance. Lack of visibility into fields, crops, and growing operations is driving inefficiencies across the agri-food value chain. Agriculture is the last and by far the largest sector going through digital transformation. But while industry is quick to adopt innovative technologies, farmers and the agriculture sector in general are lacking behind. Agritask bridges the gap between farmers and the wider agri-food ecosystem. Working with large growers over the past decade, we developed an open SaaS agronomic intelligence platform that powers solutions for key challenges faced by farmers, food companies, insurers, and additional players in the agri-food ecosystem. Our solutions provide crucial agronomic insights to optimize operations across the agri-food value chain and ensure sustainable farming and sourcing practices, sowing to harvest, farm to factor. Agronomic intelligence starts with capturing data from all relevant sources field data via our mobile app, remote sensing, weather stations, sensors, irrigation, machinery, and a growing list of over 70 integrations with agronomic systems and enterprise software. 
We then need to put it in the right context, leveraging both proprietary models and data, as well as customer configurable processes in order to provide actionable insights to multiple users within the agri-food ecosystem, mainly focusing on food and beverage companies, enabling them to optimize and predict supply chains, empower their growers, and ensure sustainable practices, and insurance companies, enabling them to accurately assess risk of individual farms in order to provide better personalized coverage, making agriculture insurance accessible to the millions of uninsured farmers worldwide. Just to take two examples, a large food conglomerate working with our solutions for the past three years has achieved an 8% increase in yield with higher predictability while gaining full traceability on supply. A leading insurer in Nigeria has leveraged our ag insurance solutions to insure over 15,000 smallholder farms in just over a year with automated policies that did not and simply could not exist before. There are many agri-tech solutions focusing on various aspects of agronomy, mainly geared towards farmers. Agritask has built an enterprise-ready platform to bridge the visibility gaps and answer the needs of the wider agri-food ecosystem. We provide the agronomic intelligence that enables optimizing supply chains, full traceability, insuring the uninsured, all while maintaining social and environmental sustainability practices and impacting the lives of millions of farmers worldwide. Come grow with us. Wow, thank you very much. I mean, it's quite interesting, yeah. It seems like we're going to have a lot of, of things to talk in these 15 minutes, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that is enough to, to fit in all the things that we are interested in. Okay, next, uh, uh would you mind to introduce our, what Siam uh, Kuwata on this term of like smart farming and your, your works, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. I would like to thank to the organizers uh, for inviting us uh, to uh, introduce ourselves and also uh, to share uh, what we have been uh, doing regarding the uh, smart farming under the concept of uh, the producing uh, more from less. And uh, my name is Prapon Ostapan, and uh, uh, let me introduce a little bit about our company. Uh, could the, uh, the organizer share the presentation, please? Okay, and uh, uh, about Siam Kubata Corporation, uh, we are the uh, joint venture. Uh, can, can you, uh, sorry, can you click more? Because probably click a couple of times. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we are the um, joint venture company between uh, Kubota Japan holding 60% and also the Siam Simin Group Thailand holding uh, 40%. And uh, we have been uh, in Thailand around uh, 43 years old. Uh, currently, uh, we have around uh, 3,300 employees and uh, we have uh, two factories uh, nearby the Bangkok. Next, please. And uh, next, next, uh, okay. And uh, from the starting of the business, uh, we uh, produced the uh, diesel engine and then uh, we launched the uh, power tiller in, in the next uh, couple of years. And then the, uh, after that, uh, just the, uh, the past 20 years that uh, we have imported the big uh, modern machinery like <clears throat> tractor or combined harvest. Uh, and as we uh, saw the increasing demand, uh, in modern uh, farm machinery, uh, we established the uh, manufacturing base in Thailand uh, to produce the tractor and uh, combine harvesters. And um, in order for the our farmers to own the big uh, farm machinery, we also set up the Kubota Leasing Company uh, to provide the financial lease to the customers so that uh, our customer can uh, get the machinery to earn the income first and then later pay us. So far, the, for the past 20 years, the uh, modern farm machinery uh, demand has been uh, uh, growing well. And next, please. Uh, clearly, uh, these are our products. Uh, apart from the products that I mentioned, we also have the mini excavator, uh, the transplanter, and also uh, the drone. So uh, in the past that uh, we start 
with the uh, the machinery but now we are seeing that uh, only the uh, machinery will not be enough so we are now uh, developing the uh, innovation and technology uh, to be used uh, to increase the productivity in agriculture so that will be the brief summary of our company thank you oh I think it's quite interesting that yeah, uh, for for me, I, I'm from the digital world, the machinery. So though I'm quite interested in agriculture or coffee beans or other kind of like teas, but yeah, yeah, so the uh, innovations in the machinery is open my my eyes that wow, the world is bigger, much much bigger. <laughs> okay, so today I think our the the form that we are discussing maybe I. I, I, I think as I'm from the startup world, when we talk about startup world, when we talk about the, how do we create innovation, we will start with the pain points. Yeah. I think I have some questions about the pain points for everyone can listen to these, this talk and then they can imagine that how would this coming up and what type of opportunities behind the agriculture in the world. Yeah. Uh, can I start with our, with, I mean, first, I mean, can 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 you tell me what pain points do you see in in this business? And then, uh, as we know Israel, right? You you want to to you create technology in Israel, but you want to use it worldwide. In, in startup, normally we will start a pain point because we quite immersed. You know, we got immersive experience about that pain points. How do you manage to to get this pain point as well? Can you tell me about your pain points and how do you manage to understand and immerse to this pain point? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so I'll I'll, sh I'll share the presentation, but I'll I'll just say first of all that Israel is a very small place, and uh, and as an Israel uh, and as an Israeli startup, we start by thinking globally, and we start by thinking about the pain points not only in Israel. But the pain points of the of the wider ecosystem, and we started working in Israel, but very fast we went uh, we went outside, and we tried to understand in the in the food section and in the enti entire agricultural ecosystem, where are the main pain points, and how do we how can we as agritas come and support and, and help solve some of these pain points? So the, the 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 biggest challenge we see in the market is what we call the the the, the problem of digitalization, which has behind it the what we call the adoption barrier. The adoption barrier is how do you get this entire ecosystem to move through the digitalization, the digitalized uh, revolution in order to start being much more, having much more data, having processes much more in, in a much more easy and efficient way in order to have data to drive uh, data-driven decisions on everything we do in order to optimize the, the 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 entire agronomic ecosystem and from that also the supply chains. So what we are trying to focus is how we provide, uh, how we help provide the ecosystem and the ecosystem is driven ma mainly by the buyers, much more predictability into what's going on in the field, be being able to support much more sustainable practices. And from that, we see three main pain points that we're trying to, to solve. And the first one is how do you connect between the buyers and the growers? At the end of the day, the buyers need, want, want on one side to help the growers grow according to their protocols, according to the best practices. They, in many of the cases, the food and beverage companies are the ones that have the agronomists, that have the, the know-how, that know the, 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 the best practices to, to grow coffee, for example, but they, they are disconnected from the field. So they have lack of visibility into the grower's operation. So in many of the cases, they don't know what's going on or what practices are used in order to be able to understand also what they will get at the end of the season in terms of quality and quantity. And they don't have the ways to communicate with the farmers because in many cases they want to support the farmers, they want to give the agronomic advice, but they're very far away and they don't have the, the possibility to do that. So that's one, the, the first pain point. The second pain point and the result of this is unpredictable supply. And the, 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 main, the, 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 the difficulty these companies have one is into in forecasting and monitoring yields 
understanding what is the yield that's going to get will i have enough supply to 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 answer all my needs later on in the supply chains so both in terms of quality and quantity but second is everything related to variations in supply time and quality i don't know when i'm going to get it and how i'm going to get it and that's the second thing that we're trying to focus on see how we can bring this predictability to the to the to the to our clients the third thing is from a different angle and this is about sustainable practices and how do you help the entire the, the growers grow in a much more sustainable way to enforce a, and monitor sustainable practices to make sure that we're able to reduce carbon footprint, to reduce the use of chemicals, improve the making sure that everybody complies with the relevant standards. That's on one side. On the other side, we want to make sure that we have full traceability from farm to factory in order to be able to ensure uh, the food safety. And these three pain points cause at the end of the day, the, follow the following problems. So we have today insufficient yield quality and quantity because we're not able to support the growers to grow according to the best practices. We have supply shortages and delays because I have no predictability into what's going on. And one of the biggest trends that's happening now is the, is the, 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 the effort that is, or the, or the pressure that is coming from the, 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 the customers from the industry to grow in a much more sustainable way. And if the companies won't do that, there's a huge reputational risk of everything related to child labor, everything related to environment sustainability and, uh, and, and governments. So these three things are the things that, that, that are the, the consequence of these pain points that we're trying to solve. And we're trying to work with the companies in order to support these operations. Right. So yeah, seem seem like our uh, I think our uh, from what we have seen is that three pain points, right? First are uh, digital adoption, right? Because the, most of growers are quite have some difficulties to con connect to the digital and use the digital tools. The second part, because of these we are lacking of these data. So it's quite difficult to predict the supply and then that make it like are quite difficult to order through the supply chains if you cannot guarantee that what supplies is going to be like in the future, right? And it affects every business. And uh, the last part would be like uh, the way they are doing. Sometimes if they want to make sure that the productivity is there, the way they are doing would be like not quite sustained because they are affect exactly. with the environmental and whatsoever, right? Okay. Or from Miss Whereupon, from the Thailand size that you are working with and probably like you can mention around the regional because I, I, I know that Siamkota, you also cover Vietnam, Cambodia or CLMV. Do you see any pain points and what, what type of things that do you see from Siamkota? Yeah. I think the um, talking about the pain points or the uh, challenges of Siam Kubota, uh, we need to talk about the environment for the um, the agriculture in this region. I will give example for in Thailand that the uh, uh, for the our customer uh, part, uh, uh, eighty percent of our customer uh, are the farmers. So uh, the first observation that uh, we could see is that the uh, it's about the GDP generated from the uh, agriculture sector. Um, for the uh, Thailand, uh, there are about uh, 12 uh, million labor uh, in the agriculture sector, and it accounts for around 30% uh, of the total labor workforce. Why, if we compare to the uh, GDP, uh, actually, for the GDP from agriculture, it accounts for only uh, eight to nine percent of the total GDP. So this is um, uh, quite um, uh, contradicts to what we are talking now that we're talking about uh, producing more uh, from less. But it now seems like clearly we are um, uh, producing less for more. So um, the the other problem the uh, also on the um, uh, related that or not related to the uh, low GDP, uh, which is about the crop use. Uh, in Thailand, our main crops uh, include the rice, the, the maize, the uh, cassava, 
the uh, para rubber, uh, the oil palm, and the sugar cane. And uh, for example, uh, the use of the uh, the rice, the maize, and the sugar cane crop uh, in Thailand actually is uh, lower than the world average because the most of the farmers uh, they own the small uh, plot of lands, and also uh, it is uh, difficult for them to access to the. Uh, um, so smart machinery uh, to cultivate uh, their farm uh, efficiently. So um, the challenges uh, for the farmers uh, will also include the um, environmental risk. Uh, for example, uh, the climate change, uh, which uh, causing the frequency of the uh, El Nido and La Nilla, while the irrigation system in Thailand uh, cover around 23% uh, of the uh, farming areas. So uh, this uh, also the our uh, the our challenges, and the the other factor will also the uh, the we are entering into the aging society, and the about the eighty percent of our farmers the age like uh, uh, forty to fifty uh, years, and they they are still uh, fed with uh, the high household debt, and also the uh, low access to the architect. So, and uh, about the market side, uh, the farmer also faced with the, uh, the price uncertainty uh, and also the low market power and also the high uh, export uh, competition. So I think these are the uh, pain points that uh, we, we are facing with and uh, we, it will be our uh, big challenge for us to help the farmers to overcome this uh, difficulties by uh, bringing in the uh, smart farming uh, to uh, share with them and to educate them. So uh, that, that the, uh, will be about it. Yes, could one upon, can I ask you a little bit more in details? I, I, will, I will summarize that you mentioned that, uh, first of all, because the pattern of Thai farmers and, and all growers, we have a small land. And then for we have small land and then we don't have like, we cannot access to the new technologies much. That's why the, yep. our productivity is quite low, right? Because yep. we have around 30% of the people in Thailand doing agriculture, but it's just create only eight to 9% of GDP. That right. means that productivity is, is quite low. It's quite low. And right. yeah, and that would create like the household debt for this kind of people. Yep. Right. Um, so yep. that's why not many people would like to be every especially new generation. They don't yep. they don't want to be uh farmers because the uh so that's why uh they, they create house household debt and then Sam Kubata about to to bring in the new technologies right for them right. to improve their productivities and help them to manage their debts. It is that are this correct? Right, right, right. Just, just to a little bit add on that, uh, when we are saying that the uh, most of the farmer they own the small uh, part of land, but the uh, right now, uh, I think the uh, government in, in Thai government quite understand well. So uh, uh, we try to promote the uh, uh, the farm, the small farmers together, together, and then to be like a large scale farm, so that uh, they can own and share the machinery. So they can utilize the this kind of the sharing the machinery and uh, to use to increase their the uh, crop productivity. So so that will be the good part that the I think Thailand uh, is working on that right now. All right. So we are about to use like, the network effect models with the Amkubota, right? So the yep. growers or farmers they can share the machinery. Okay. So they can reduce their cost and then they, they can improve productivity because the bigger lands can create more productivity when they do together, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. right. How about if, other countries if, around Thailand? Oh, yeah, yeah, Ahmed, yeah. Anything no, yeah, it, yeah if, I, if I can jump in, this is exactly what we're seeing. We uh, Most of mm -hmm. the users of our system are smallholders, but at the end of the day, you need some kind of aggregator to aggregate all of them together in order to be able to adopt it, this technology. And these aggregators, in addition to maybe 
being able to help them provide machinery and technology that is when you have a wider scale, you're able to provide. Yep. But they, in many cases, provide also the agronomic advice and inputs and other things that can support these growers. And I, we, I, we, we see in other countries and also in Thailand mm -hmm. that once you're able to aggregate all of them together and look at, it, at them as if they were like a regional project or one large farm, mm -hmm. you're able to implement a lot of these best practices in order to move them to the next level, improve their their, their, their productivity, help them reduce cost, improve their yields, and so on. Ahmed, can I ask you about the other countries with the larger farms? Do they have something similar problems to Thailand? Because Thailand, each farmer, they have small pot. That's why we have to combine together. But for 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 other countries who has a larger farm, do they still I, I, have the problem? I, I think that these are two different segments. And, you know, when, when we work in Brazil, there's huge farms, some of them 200,000 hectare farms. So they can they can work by themselves and they have different challenges. But also in Brazil, there are areas with very small farmers. And I think that the way we look at it is that there are two segments. They're the large farmers that need something very specific and, and they have a different way of working. And there's the small farmers that need this aggregator to aggregate them together. From our experience, the food and beverage companies are many times serve as these aggregators. So we, when we work with Starbucks, Starbucks buys from 400,000 small coffee growers in over 30 countries, and they have the agronomist to support all these growers. So I think it's different challenges, but at the end of the day, the goal is the same. The goal is to implement technologies on a wide scale in order to help them make data-driven decisions and improve their operations, improve their productivity, and at the end of the day, maximize the use of their land. Yep. And, and Kunwala Pond, from, from your point of view, are those the Cambodia, Vietnam, or Laos, mm. are, do they have similar problems to Thailand farmers about the small part of lands? Yeah, I think the all the Asian countries they almost have the same problem. But uh, if compared to the adoption of the mechanization, I think probably uh, Thailand is ahead of the Cambodia, or Vietnam, probably like ten years. They they are now also starting to adopt the uh, the big uh, I mean the modern machinery. But the uh, the for the implementation of the IoT or the other the technology infrastructure, I think they they may need uh, some more time. But the the pattern well, are quite are quite similar. Right? Yep. Yeah. From your point of view, could wrap on because Ahmed he mentioned that uh, I think farmers or growers they have a difficulty to access to the digital adoption on the technologies, right? Do you, do you think, do we have these kind of problems in Thailand at CLMB? And whether, because now the person who aggregated the data, ASEAN Kubota, would, do you think that you are, as ASEAN Kubota, you are a big part to, to bridge them to the digital adoption or technologies? Yeah, it, this is, I think, uh, to deal with the people is the more challenging for us. The, uh, I will give some example that the, as, as I mentioned that the, um, uh, the, uh, the farmers the, now they, they enter into the aging society and we had our customer, the average is around 50. So uh, the challenge is the, how we uh, could the, um, share the knowledge with them and educate them or how we uh, uh, could encourage the smart farmers uh, to into uh, to to in uh, to be interested or to enter into the agriculture sector, and uh, actually we we have some the um, uh, projects that we work with the um, the community uh, the, around ten years ago that uh, we uh, support the around seven communities the uh, in Thailand, and uh, we. Uh, they they are like the group of a uh, gathering of people, and the, the the total people is now uh, I think around almost two thousand people, and the I think the, the important thing is that uh, we we have to have someone like uh, uh, the people to work with them quite uh, quite closely, because the uh, it, it's not only that we give them the uh, the knowledge or the solution, but we have to. Uh, Go, go along with them to uh, uh, consult them from time to time and also to uh, try to bring in the, the new uh, technology or 
uh, the new innovation so that they can gradually adopt and uh, can like uh, can can gradually adopt and improve their uh, agriculture with us. And uh, from the past in India, I think it it appeared that uh, we are working quite well. And the 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 important uh, success factor is also depend on the leader of the group. If we can find a leader that uh, can be like uh, the um, more the participate to the group and also uh, to uh, be able to adopt like uh, the new technology or the new solution that we provide, and then they can persuade the members in the group. So that that is also another key factor to, uh, I mean, to make it possible <laughs> to be in the new technology for them. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as I think as in ASEAN, we have like collectivism uh, uh, theme of thinking, but from the Western world, you have like individualism. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same thing similar about the community things in, in other countries doing the agriculture that Kunwar Pan just mentioned? Yes, I think agriculture in general, the, the, there are the, there are things that are very individual, but in general, because the importance of, of economies of scale, we see in many countries the, the, the farmers working together and joining forces in order to be able to either, you know, buy their, their inputs together, sell their, 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 their yield together, Adopt technology, get agronomic advice, get support, but get some get some services from the outside. So I think it's very common. If I if I look at, at places like uh, Latin America or Central uh, Central America, uh, uh, of course uh, all all over uh, Southeast Asia, but also in Europe. In many of the cases, there there are a lot of small farmers, and you need to bring them together in order to work. And there. Are, there are different players in the ecosystem in, in different places that serve as the ones that are that are grouping all these farmers together. In some of the cases, it's the input providers. In other cases, it's the food companies. In other companies, in, in other cases, it's the traders. But you, you always see some connection between a large group of, uh, of growers mm -hmm. because you need that skill in order to be able to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. All right, I see. So each country they have different like trigger points or the key persons who can combine community and lead community, yeah. right? And, and and I think that the 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 challenge for for companies like, like us is to find in each in each country how the market is structured, who are the main drivers of the ecosystem, who are the ones that are able to to drive change within the farmers and work with them because they're the ones that will help you drive the change within the within the the small farmers that are that are working so hard on a, on a, on a on a day to day basis it's difficult for them to do it without some kind of support from the outside yeah, so today, I can share, I can share with you about the coffee supply chains in Thailand actually now many many farmers or co coffee growers they are working the person who who lead them and work with them most of them they are the cafe owners i mean co coffee shop owners it, barista in 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 the in bangkok in phuket in the big cities they are selling their specialty coffees and and now they are the person who always go hand hand to hand with their growers for they can make sure that they will get out very very high quality coffee beans for them can roast and then sell to their, deliver to their, their customer. So the key trigger point who combine these uh, farmers together are the person who, the, the joy group of the barista and loster mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in town, in the urban areas. Yes, we, we see this, this, this entire, the same trend in mm -hmm. many other places within the coffee and cocoa industry. At the end of the day, the buyers and whether the buyer is a coffee shop, whether the buyer is a, is a large company, whether the buyer is, is a trader, at the end of the day, they work very, very closely with the growers because the quality of coffee is so important and, to, and, and they want to support the growers to get to the, right, to, to get to the right quality. So at the end of the day, that's the driver. So if, if in Thailand, it's a coffee shop, it's the buyers that, that buy and later on need that quality that can connect all the growers together, but it's the same also in other places. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think, what do you think for, about the rice? 
do we have like any specialty rice like the chef the special chef would like to require for for this kind of rice in go do you see anything similar like this in in thailand uh, excuse me you mean the the shape of the rice mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it seems like uh, many, many Thailand, uh, Thailand they are quite popular in chef tables, right? And seems like when, when I go to chef table, they always say, this rice is come from these farmers, this is special, and they charge very high. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we have different kind of rices, and then um, I think um, uh, we, like a jasmine rice, right? <laughs> that we, we know that the jasmine rice, it, uh, in uh, the Thai jasmine rice, is, the price is quite high compared to the normal rice. Okay, and then our, can I ask you one, one more thing about the data driven? Because I think both of you, we we be talking about if we aggregate the data, we have the data, we can we can help them with data driven. But when we talk about data driven, the first thing is we gather the data. The second, we make a decision. The second, we have, the last part is we have to communicate this to the grower and farmers and make sure that they understand, they believe us, and they will act accordingly to the data. Could you mind to, to tell me the challenge or the way you are doing or the communication to the action with this farmer? <laughs> yeah, Sh should I start? Uh, yeah, I'm it first. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, sure. So if, if I can just share one slide. Uh, the, the the screen for a second the first of all you're right that everything is is based on the data collection and the ability to collect the all the relevant data that is needed for 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 decision making so in agritask our focus is how do we get all that data into into a one platform one database solution that later on you can analyze and provide the the insights so in terms of data collection we collect data from three main different uh, sources one is through the people on the field going on the field they go with a mobile application that enables them to collect any data that until now wasn't collected in the field now everything is collected digitally everything comes with the location stamp timestamp and user stamp to be able to see everything later geographically on maps the second layer is the remote sensing is using satellite images drones uh, virtual weather stations to be able to bring data from afar and being able to bring satellite data analyze the data and get new insights just from the data that is coming from 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 far away from uh, the satellites mostly and the third type of data is all additional technologies that exist on the field that you want to integrate them into into one system so until today we've done over 70 different integrations with sensors with uh, with irrigation controllers with weather stations with machinery companies like john dirk and case new holland kubota not yet but hopefully we'll do it soon uh, erp systems <laughs> but at the end of the day in order to bring everything into into one place once you have all the data together then you start doing the analysis then you're able to to do all this cross data analysis and implement any agronomic model in order to generate all of these, these insights. And at the end of the day, after you have all of that, then it's a matter of communication, how you can communicate. Sometimes you can communicate through an alert. Sometimes you send them uh, recommendations of what to do. In other places, you can, you can build reports and dashboards for, for the aggregator that can see all the data, can benchmark, can do, all this analysis and through that you're able to bring the entire cycle from the data collection to the actual recommendation to the grower on the field okay yeah thank you i mean how about you when, when you communicate to the farmers do you have any dif difficulties to the communicate and lead them to the actions that we want to see from the data like combine together please this small land so you can do this yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. I think I think what we are trying to to communicate them is that we we uh, try to uh, introduce like uh, our the agriculture uh, solution to them, uh, like uh, we uh, we not only uh, show them like uh, the open farm but also the uh, the closed system for for example the greenhouse and also the uh, uh, the plant factory. 
and uh, we uh, we think uh, in combine together both the open house and the the uh, core system will be uh, enable them to uh, like uh, to increase the revenue and uh, and in order to de develop the like uh, the solution that uh, we mentioned uh, we also they try to uh, develop the know-how like uh, we call the kubota uh, aki solution which uh, we will match the uh, farming machinery with the uh, the right agriculture uh, solution so that they can increase the uh, productivity and also reduce the cost and uh, they they wow. can uh, use like uh, the less resources so so at the end uh, the, the income will will be increased right okay that's yeah. interesting before we go to the last question i got uh, yeah. before we go to the last question about the capital that each we i think i have seen two of you you have the index together to tell about the vegetation and plantation or whatsoever for them and then you use those index to to mix with the capital to develop them but before we, we, we go to that question the last one are i got uh, some questions from the audience yeah are the question from the audience is are they are uh, interested in do you think whether climate change all over the world or uh, how uh, how do we make sure that we have technologies to make the flora have the healthy crops and high yield with, with the effect from the climate change that are coming, right? Any new technology? Or and another question, I think it's quite could be related because how about the vertical farming? Would it help anywhere using any any interesting cases that we can share? Yeah, both of you who were. Amit or Ms. Rapon. Yeah. Yeah. So first so, is about the climate change, about the crops, and the second one is about vertical farm. So uh, about climate change, because we have a lot of data in the system already for over five years, we're gradually seeing the change, and this is driving a huge difficulty for the for for the farmers, and will continue in the next years. And and I think that one of the implications here is that it's very difficult to to anticipate this and to understand what's going on without having this clear data, without having the 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 the, the very precise, for example, uh, weather forecast, without having being able to see what happened lately, without uh, being able to analyze all the data. So I think that the 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 climate change and the difficulties it will drive on the industry will force the industry or will 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 help advance much quicker the adoption of these technologies because these technologies have the power to uh, of course they don't go full visibility but to give you a bet much better sense of what's going on what to anticipate what is c going to happen in the next few days or for or a few weeks and start preparing for that and being able to make decisions or even preventative decisions in advance in order to overcome these challenges Right. Uh, for Kupra Point, I think I have uh, some questions from the audience that they're specific. we are asking for the Siam Kubota that are for uh, for Siam Kubota. Do you have any benefits to support the the bigger farms? Yeah, because we we, we talk about the, the farmers who have small lot of land, right? They ask first question is Siam Kubota. Do you have any support for the bigger bigger land, the large land, and are uh, the aggregator? Should do cut uh, are are the aggregator aggregator also doing the contract farming with a small farmer or or not? Yeah, there are two questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think uh the for for the uh, uh the people who own the big big plot of farm, I think it, uh, they can utilize the, the machinery like uh, economically, right? Because they they have the the bigger one, mm. and uh, uh for I. I think I will give some example about the uh, when we do, for example, for the rice farming, uh, we will have like uh, the the our uh, knowledge that we will start from like uh, the design of, of the farm that the, for example, if we use a machinery, we need to design the farm uh, to match with the, uh, for example, the, the, the width of the machinery so that when we do the harvesting, the machinery can harvest uh, efficiently. 
So, so that will, will be the benefit that if we have the, the big pot of land and then we can use the, the uh, machinery. And then uh, later uh, for, for the, um, the, we also have the uh, zero broadcast uh, solution uh, for the rice farming that uh, we suggest uh, three methods. For example, we do the transplanting and we do the direct uh, seeding and we also do the dry uh, direct seeding. Uh, this one will match to the particular uh, of life farming so that uh, at the end when when we do something like this uh, it will the, uh, reduce the use of the uh, fertilizers also the water and also some the uh, raw material for for the rice farming so uh, okay. and yeah yeah and and also uh, after the we we harvest the the rice we also have the hay baler that uh, it can uh, collect the uh, by, the agriculture byproduct uh, so that the uh, the farmers also earn the income to sell this byproduct right. for example they sell to the, uh, uh, the as a biomass or they use as the mm. uh, the the feeding to the animals. All right, so, so alternative yeah. incomes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, alternative income. And the the other thing that the uh, the big farm uh, the big uh, the farmer can can do is that they will use like uh, Amit mentioned that we use the uh, IoT platform so that they can uh, collect the data of the like uh, the temperature, uh, the soil ingredients and the water, the fertilizer, something like that. So, so they can utilize those kind of information and plan for their crops. And and for this yeah. one, yeah, as you mentioned, whether it will be like the the, the contract or not contract, I think bo both are possible because if we have the gathering the the big pot of land, then they can do like uh, 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 economically. No. Yeah. Okay, so we are approaching the time flies. We have only yeah. three minutes left. So, oh. <laughs> so probably, yeah. Could, could you might you yeah uh, anything you want to mention about any uh, your projects that you want to audience to to know about to wrap up? Actually, actually, I I, I have some questions, but I think we are approaching the the last thing. Um. Or, 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 yeah, could you? I mean, you may you may go first. I I I thought I could wrap up. You have the video, right? Yeah, but to, I'm not sure whether it will be okay. The video will last like the, the six minutes because the uh, I would like to show that uh, what we have invested for the uh, uh, to bring in the uh, smart farming technology to share to the people that they are interesting. So we, we have the invest in the uh, demonstration farm with around uh, 35 uh, right. hectare size. So if possible, probably if, if we still have enough time, I, I have like six, six yeah. minute video to present. Yeah, maybe I I, I, I ask Ahmed to, to finalize the word and then maybe we play your videos okay. to the end. Thank right? you. So, so we end, we're ending this session with your video then. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank, thank you, Ahmed. thank you very much. Anything you want to mention or highlight at the end yeah. of the session? Yes, yeah, so, so, so if maybe I'll just, with 30 seconds show just a, a, a small case study which is which is nice to see how we're able to close the the, the entire loop uh, if i can just put the presentation for a second uh, this is a this is a customer that we've been working for 4 years it's a very large food company and what we enable them to do is we started with enable them to give agronomic advice and yield estimation to their models, and we continue to bring them full traceability of the entire process from from the farm to the harvest, including understanding exactly what's going on in every stage of the of the way. The outcome there was 100% of the growers adopted the platform. So everybody's currently using, so they have full visibility. They achieved 8% yield increase in the first year of using the, the system. They have today a yield estimation model that works and gives them anticipation even a month and a half before harvest on what they will get at the end of the season. and all their post-harvest activity, understanding what they're getting from each one of the growers and what they're getting from each farm at what quality, everything they have in one system. So this is just an understanding of how you can start and, and grow with the company in order at the end of the day to give full, full digitalization and put their operations in a new level. Uh, and just again, thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure to talking to you. Right. Okay. Thank you, Amir. So we are ending. 
Hello. We are ending this session with the video from from Kun Varapon. Do you do you want to talk about anything shortly before we go to the videos? No, oh, it's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, just the uh, after the you are you guys seeing, so probably we are very welcome. If anyone would like to come to visit our farm, thank you very much. It's it's located yeah, yeah. in the Shonburi Province. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So we are ending the session with with your video, and thank you both of you to joining this session. And I think uh, technology is there, but execution and how to to work with hand to hand with the growers would be the key from listen to to all of you, right? Okay, uh, thank you very much for today. And then our uh, admin, could you help to play the videos and be ending this session here? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ka. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Kubota Farm, Innovative Farming Experience Center, has an objective to create a modern Kubota agricultural experience in ASEAN. The center will also be the open innovation center to demonstrate agricultural innovation domestically and internationally. The solutions are developed under the concept end-to-end -end solutions, which is integrated agriculture starting from the upstream process to the downstream to create the best experience with modern farming techniques. Kubota Farm has invested around 200 million baht to develop and establish a source of knowledge that is created mainly according to the needs of Farmers. Saim Kubota has cooperated with both government and private sectors to develop the Kubota Farm. Kubota Farm is located on 220 Rai land in Banbung, Chonburi Province. All innovations and knowledge in the farm would be displayed in the main exhibition building and outdoor zones. The zones will be divided into nine zones as follows. Zone 1 Integrated Agriculture Consulting, where visitors can exchange agricultural knowledge and solutions. Zone 2. Precision Farming for Rice and Post-Harvest Crops, displaying a model of how to do precision rice farming by using technology to increase productivity and reduce costs. Zone 3. New Agricultural Theory, demonstrating how to manage the land size from 10 to 15 rice effectively to generate income all year round. Zone 4, Pyro Rubber and Oil Pond, showing how to use machinery to reduce costs. Zone 5, Construction Solutions, showing the operation of a mini excavator. Zone 6, Modern Field Crop Agriculture, demonstrating models of growing sugarcane, cassava, and maize. Zone 7, Agricultural Research, where researches and solutions of integrated agriculture have been developed. Zone 8, Agricultural Training, which is the center of knowledge sharing. Zone 9, Experience of Agricultural Innovations, where visitors can have a driving trial of Kubota products. Besides our study and development of innovative solutions in the Kubota farm, Saim Kubota has implemented innovation and digital technology to further develop our service and solutions for farmers to access to innovation to implement integrated agriculture and bring it into use widely. Today, Saim Kubota has brought our innovation to develop smart farm solution by focusing on both collecting key agricultural data in order to create reports and analysis and then develop forecasting models for decision-making for activities and reducing agricultural risk by using innovation together with equipments, advanced machinery, and software for farm optimization and precision farming. The examples of product and service innovation are as follows. KISS system or Kubota Intelligent Solution, which is the first IoT product that Saim Kubota has introduced to the market. The key features of KISS are identifying the current location of the machinery, monitoring machinery for maintenance schedule, and reporting to collect machine working data to analyze and improve farmers' working capacity and productivity. 
Machinery management system is an enlargement of professional machinery management. The software is used for optimizing capacity of the use of machinery, reducing costs, and increasing income for agricultural service providers. Farm management has yielded a great impact on farmers' income, so it is a must for farmers to collect key agricultural data such as sunlight, water level, moisture, wind, diseases, and insects. With the use of the farm management system, it shows various real-time data to analyze and help make the decision faster, and the data can be developed to be an analytical model to monitor and forecast productivity for a better farm management. Moreover, another innovation is used with farm management system called scouting drone. This type of drone is used for recording high-resolution pictures which would be used for growth analysis and productivity forecasts. And this drone can also be used as a spraying drone which is for maintenance purposes, reducing the use of chemical substances and increasing the health safety of farmers. To modernize traditional agriculture, Siam Kubota has created an application called KAS Crop Calendar to help farmers effectively control and improve their techniques such as during the watering, fertilizing, and harvesting periods. If these factors are properly controlled, farmers will be able to do precision farming by themselves. Most of all, Saim Kubota has committed to uplifting agriculture, making farmers have a better life, and creating sustainable food security for the world society.